It's 12.05 in the afternoon here on 90.3 FM. You're listening to Helping Seniors of Brevard, heard every Wednesday, 12 noon to 1 o'clock, as we get the show underway. Here's the host of the show and the executive director of Helping Seniors of Brevard, the one and only Carrie Fink. As far as I know. <laughs> Thank you, John Harper. And on behalf of Joe Steckler, our president and founder, Kim Bernard, our education specialist, and on our entire team, welcome to uh, our regular Wednesday gathering here on 90.3 FM WEJF. We sort of say get around the radio, get your lunch uh, buddies together, and uh, let's uh, let's celebrate the day together. And uh, we a special welcome to those who are joining us online at WEJF.net. And you know, John Harper, we've been having a lot of fun here lately because we're into car raffle season. In fact, uh, yesterday evening, we were uh, visiting with a whole lot of friends up at... Um, Longhorn Steakhouse on Merritt Island, who dedicated their Tuesday night uh, to helping seniors, which meant as people would come in, uh, they would uh, have a voucher and the 10% of their dinner check would come back as a donation into helping seniors and as a small nonprofit, as you know, we need all the help we can get. One of the things that was so much fun, though, was we had to have uh, the opportunity to have that beautiful 2021 Dodge Challenger out there. And we had a big old win me, uh, win me kind of sticker on the front and uh, people were coming up and buying tickets and uh, it's getting closer and closer, John Harper. In fact, you know, uh, Sunday, we were all out at the American Muscle Car Museum because we had our make good date for 2020. All the people that uh, we couldn't go in the museum because of COVID, uh, they were invited. Mark generously invited them back out to the museum. And it was so many people and so much fun. And everybody is just now looking forward to that whole uh, October 9th date. Well, that's uh, right around the corner coming up and uh, time to get those tickets if you haven't purchased them already. And uh, what was the reaction uh, at the uh, steakhouse uh, to the car? Oh, everybody loved it. We put po- we posted pictures on the Helping Seniors of Brevard Facebook page. You should see it. In fact, in fact, my wife Tammy she she loved that car. She got in. We got a whole bunch of pictures of her in the car, and uh, just people just people uh, just love that. And that's just one of four cars, John Harper, as you know, that you can pick from when you're the winner on October 9th, right? Because you could also take the Camaro, the Mazda Miata, or the Kia Sportage. They're all great cars from A.J. Hire's uh, top line of dealerships, the Boniface Hires Group. It's become an event that people are looking forward to. It's uh, well organized. A lot of people have helped out uh, the Helping Seniors of Brevard organization and certainly the Boniface Hires dealerships uh, throughout the county have been uh, very instrumental in helping this to become a huge success. Uh, the leader in the county, as far as I'm concerned, uh, not only in dealerships, but I'm also talking about in the uh, fundraising for the uh, raffle tickets for the cars. Yeah, no, a- AJ and Joe, they go way, way back. And in fact, re- I remember uh, Joe telling a story. He's trying to figure out how he's going to get money together to build. They, they call them Joe's Clubs to this day from the Do the they Mar- still? Yeah, yeah. The, the Brevard Alzheimer's and, and Joe. Uh, Joe and AJ said, well, why don't we do a car raffle? Maybe that's a way to raise money. (laughs) And here we are. So we've been around as helping seniors ourselves 10 years now. And this is the fifth annual car raffle. And it is, I was just telling our our in-studio guest today, Greg Schwendeman, with the law office of Amy B. Van Fossen, a great, another great friend of the Helping Seniors Organization. He helped us last year. You helped us last year, Greg, with the whole uh, car raffle thing as we were getting right up to it, too. So you know all about it. Yeah, it's a lot of fun, and it really benefits the community. So yeah. it's great. And it, and it keeps our we, – we become the little engine that could because you do, because you buy those tickets and help keep this thing going. And you can get your tickets at Helping Seniors Car Raffle. And I'm going to get off this soapbox in just a minute, but I do want to add one thing, John Harper, is that on uh, next uh, – this is what was really exciting. On next Wednesday – so some of you may remember we did a Dodge versus Chevy challenge last year where we had uh, Team Chevy and Team Team Dodge composed of folks from Hibiscus Court and also uh, folks from Seniors Helping Seniors, and they picked sides and ran these cars down uh, Mark Pylock's test track there at the American Muscle Car Museum. And so the video of that, all you have to do is go to Dodge v. Chevy. 
GoPros.com, and you'll see the whole thing that happened last year. It was hilarious. They put GoPros in there. These girls are giggling and and, and just having fun when they hit the romp down on that accelerator, and uh, it was just so much fun. But the cool thing is next Wednesday we're going to be back out there, and we're going to film the 2021 Dodge versus Chevy rematch. So we're going to see how that one turns out too. And we were laughing, Greg. We said, you know, it's, it's becoming a thing now. Everybody wants to know about this. So we said like five years from now, Mark will have to put bleachers down the side of the little drag strip and there'll be people up there <laughs> getting up and doing the wave and the whole thing. So rooting on their favorite team. So, well, they're, they're beautiful cars that are available to the winner of uh, the uh, raffle and uh, you can't uh, can't beat any of them. They're uh, they're all fabulous cars, and I think anybody would be happy with uh, whether it be the Dodge, uh, uh, the uh, Chevy Camaro, the uh, Kia Sportage, mm-hmm. or the uh, Mazda Miata, which is a, uh, a hot looking car in itself. Cool, cool car just by itself. And so you got to be the thing is you got to be in it to win it. So how do you get your tickets? You can go by any of the Boniface Hires dealerships. You can get them at HelpingSeniorsCarRaffle.com. Some people like to talk to a friendly person that would be uh kim bernard at our senior information helpline which is 321-473-7770 and she'll get you set up with tickets and greg you you guys should have tickets over at your office i think too. i believe we do at that's we're talking with greg schwendeman who's an elder law attorney with the law office of amy b van fossen we have a lot of stuff we have so much stuff we got to get to we're going to push off of this but before we get started Greg, have I asked you which car you would pick if you won? Last year you did. Uh-huh. Last year you did. Now i got to remember because I don't remember. <laughs> uh, that's all right. Uh, my answer will remain the same. For me, I probably would go for the Camaro. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, being that I have a new 16-year-old driver. I remember this. You're right. Time. See, that's, that's right. what's – I I'd probably <laughs> want the, the slowest, safest of the bunch. <laughs> that would be the Kia Sportage. Yeah. Well, we have so much uh, so much important material to get to on the show. Not well, Car- the, uh, Carrie, yeah. one more thing. Yeah. It was a August uh, – Automotive August. Yes. Is this going to be a September to remember? <laughs> oh, I like that. That's good. We're going to have so much fun with this Dodge versus Chevy Challenge. You know, I was actually surprised uh, because – it really took on so much life last year and was so much fun that I went online and we were able to, through the Helping Seniors organization, get the uh, domain name Dodge V Chevy Challenge dot com and also Dodge, you know, people, some people spell out VS Chevy Challenge dot com. And so if you go to that site, uh, you'll see all you'll see last year's. Uh, last year's uh, contest and it's going to be so much fun in fact when we were out at the muscle car museum we asked uh, ashley caswell from hibiscus court and jennifer helen from seniors helping seniors to each like be over on the chevy row and the dodge row respectively and talk up the challenge and somebody got the bright idea somebody scratched a little sign up and as uh jennifer helen is on camera and talking up the dodge here comes ashley caswell sneaking with this little sign behind uh, jennifer going on camera Go team Chevy, and it, it, it's just the fun of the rivalry of it all now at this point. So, it's good, good ahead. Good stuff. All right. So, Greg, uh, you know yeah. we have done TV shows, we've done radio shows, we've talked about guardianship, and we have been through so much over this past year with COVID. You know, it was thirty days, stop the spread. I remember you and I did a helping seniors update fairly early on. Uh, because we started that online so there would be a way for us to stay in kind of constant communication with people throughout the county because all, all the other things we couldn't do, we were supposed to stay home. And I remember you sharing some real wisdom at that time. But here we are a year later, and we're still kind of like working our way through it. It's amazing what the year's brought. Actually, it's been, what, almost, we're going on two years. It's yeah. been about a year and a yeah. half since yeah. COVID really reared its ugly head. Yeah. And so what we're seeing is uh, a lot of problems pop up that are facing the the general population, but they're really facing the elderly. Uh, Someone once said, uh, some political person said, never let a crisis go to waste. (laughs) And unfortunately, that phrase applies to criminals. Mm -hmm, And they're mm -hmm. using COVID to take advantage of the elderly. Oh, dear Lord. Yeah. Um, we're, and they're we, we really going after them. And that was something I was going to ask you about. As an elder law firm, I, I guess you guys are kind of seeing really kind of like what's happening out there. Yes, we are. Um, sadly, 
as attorneys, sometimes we see it after the fact. Oh. A lot of times, and I know you and I talked about this before, um, and Joe Steckler has been promoting, you should always have a plan. Right. You know, something proactive, something right. to comes in front, right? Well, unfortunately, we get these calls, and uh, they are really targeting seniors. So if you want to go over some of the things that I think the seniors need to be wary of, because one of the characteristics of our seniors that we have right now is they grew up in a time and in a generation where people were good. Yes. You know, by and large yes. from the world war two down to Korea war, Vietnam mm -hmm. war, those generations of people are good people. They're trusting mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. And that's what criminals prey on is their trusting characteristics. So, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of things that the elderly got to be aware of. Be aware of, number one, receiving calls. Um, what they like to do is prey upon the good nature of these people. Mm -hmm. So they, they'll call you. They'll, and this has happened many times, they'll be able to convince you that your grandchild is in jail uh, for, you know, framed. They've been arrested. They have no, no other resource, but they need 10 grand to get bail money. And what happens is, of course, the emotions cloud the judgment right and a loving grandparent wants to run and help and they do yeah. and then they find out that wasn't my grandchild at all it was a thief yeah. a scam artist who took the ten thousand dollars it's so sad i remember uh, jennifer helen with seniors helping seniors we were doing a radio show and she was relating a real life story that happened through one of the clients that they serve in helping seniors. So uh, we're talking with Greg Schwendeman, elder law attorney with the uh, law office of Amy B. Van Fossen, and we're talking about elder abuse and fraud and how we really have to be even more vigilant during COVID times and otherwise, I guess. Yes, we do. And, and you know, my dad is also a client of the firm. He's uh -huh. 89 wow. and uh, <laughs> he's doing great. He's, he's fantastic uh, physically and mentally. Yeah. And Joe is about, I think, about to turn 89 when we get up to December. You know, aging is just not what it used to be. No. I mean, we, we, we live a long time and that's why what you're talking about is even so more important because we got to stay on top of this stuff right. all, every step of the way. And, and you have people like my dad, like I said, he's very uh, sharp. He's computer literate. And so the thieves know that and yeah. they target and he's smart enough to know, Hey, look at, look at this scam I got today. And uh, he'll save them for me on <laughs> purpose. On it. Yeah. And it, it's amazing. They will send scams telling you that you need to verify your social security number. You wow. need to verify your bank account information. Yeah. You need to verify, uh, there's a problem with your prescription. And ah. a lot of these guys, these scammers, are smart enough and good enough to send you what looks like an official website or an official communication from the IRS, from CVS, yeah, yeah. from Bank of America, or whomever it is they're impersonating. Right. And when you provide that information, that's it. You open yourself up to be scammed yourself, um, either immediately or down the road through identity theft. So if you get any of those, my advice is... if. Number one, the IRS or Social Security, they're not going to contact you that way. If you think it's someone, uh, your bank or CVS or whomever it is, call them personally. Call or stop in and say, hey, is this true? Right. That is, you know, I was thinking that is such good advice you're giving, Greg Schwindeman, because from, the, from this standpoint, um, you know, at first, you would just say, well, you could just read the language and you can sell it's broken English and it's not correctly mm -hmm. like how we would say it. And so it kind of will tip you off. But with Photoshop and those things, these guys are getting really clever. And I'm with you. I always tell people, you know, if it's from your bank, you call the number you have for your yes, bank. Yes, don't it's, call the number they put right. in the, uh, and, and they're doing that on purpose, so you call their number. Right, and most importantly, don't be starting to click around stuff that comes in on those emails. Call no. them, call the number that you know and trust directly. You can get it directly from your bank statement or credit card statement or whatever. Such good, anything else that we want to, you know, we could probably spend the entire show on just this topic uh, because it is so important, but I want to make sure we tag into guardianship and some of the other sure. things that we want to we'll talk about. Is there anything else that we ought to, ought to touch on the scam situation other than, you know, being vigilant and being wary is just really the right way to be at it. Yeah. There, there's one that's uh, in my mind, um, incredibly, it, it just preys upon the worst aspects of humans and it comes to funerals. 
Oh. And I've seen this personally in my own life. Sure. I know someone this happened to. Oh, dear Lord. And what happens is, um, of course, these, these uh, criminals scan the obituaries. And oftentimes, oh. what's the obituary say? Greg Schwendeman died. Funeral is at 10 a.m. at this church, etc. Mm-hmm. What's that mean? The whole family is going to be at the Nobody's funeral. Nobody's home or whatever. Nobody's home. <laughs> and that is a very common uh, M.O. for these criminals to just say, hey, no one's home. We're going to that house wow. at 10 a.m. And wow. that happens a lot. My advice is, if you can, have a friend of the family stay behind at mm-hmm. your house while the funeral's going on. I know that sounds cold. It sounds unemotional. But that's the reality of today's world. Yeah, I guess we have to think in dimensions we're not used to from all of that before. And I guess um, as, we, as we keep moving, I want to talk a little bit about guardianship. And I want to – Sure. We're, not, we're only going to touch like on re- real – uh, like a kind of a cursory, but I want to remind folks that if you go to helping seniors of uh, you and I did a great television program where you really shared about that. And what I remember that you really impressed on me is this is why, why most of the time you want to get your documents done ahead of time Absolutely. so that you don't have to get into guardianship because that becomes almost like the option when there is no other option, right? Correct. Correct. And uh, you know, Going back to what Joe Steckler said, have a plan in advance. That mm-hmm. plan in advance, we have to follow the Florida statute, right? right? When we go to court and we're asking for guardianship, which is, hey, judge, we want you to take all the rights away from this person. That's a, that's a huge burden. It's very onerous. Yeah. By statute, before the judge does that, they have to look for what's called the least restrictive means. Mm-hmm. Those least restrictive means are, is there a power of attorney? Mm-hmm. A healthcare surrogate and living will. Is there a pre-need designation of guardian? Mm-hmm. Those sorts of things can be done in advance while you have capacity. So you are making the choice who you want to care for you. Once the time comes, you can't care for yourself. You know, and one of the things that I do know is I know that particularly the law office of Amy B. Van Fossen, which is where uh, you, Greg Schwindeman, are practicing law, mm-hmm. is you guys are famous for doing seminars and training. So you get people in kind of a really non-confrontational, low uh, low stress environment, but you're really giving them a tremendous education. And I know you guys historically have done a lot of those in person. And, and then during COVID times, you're having to do a lot of them virtually. Right. What, how does that work now? If somebody wants to learn more about all these things? Well, that, that's correct. We do them. Uh, they are free seminars. Uh huh. Amy does the bulk of them uh-huh. and uh, you know, we're still doing them now. Right. And we're, we're at the stage where a lot of the restrictions have passed, so we're back to doing them oh, in good. person in our office. Good. But if someone is uh, a little afraid for their own health, uh-huh. just let us know, and you can join in streaming via Zoom. So, so we wow. can do it either way. You could be there in person, um, be there on Zoom, and it is free. And you, we do it on a variety of topics, from estate planning to uh, VA and Medicaid benefits yeah, anything. I, I have been I have been a uh, part of some of Amy's uh, teachings, and they are just really. Uh, first of all, they're very well done. But you walk away with such a sense of things. You know, like most of us, we don't even know the right questions to ask Greg. We we don't even have the. the I guess I would say the capacity to know the questions we need to ask. Right. And so when she's doing that presentation, and you get this. Um, you just get this like, wow, I didn't even think about that part of it. And that's what makes it so important. How do you get, uh, if somebody wants to get like a schedule of what you guys have coming up, mm-hmm. where it's going to be, maybe register or however that works, how do they do that? Uh, I believe they put it on our Facebook page. Okay. I don't do social media, so I have to admit <laughs> that I, I can't <laughs> right, I right. can't say that, that, that it's up there for sure. But in any event, the best way to do it is call our office at mm-hmm. 321-345-5945. I'll say that number one more time. 321-345-5945. And we'll make, we'll make sure that we get a link going on our social media so people know where to go get that. But I'm telling you, we we, we really have enjoyed and learned a lot from, from those seminars. I want to bring in, if it's okay with you, uh, we have Dr. Lee Sheldon, who is uh, going to be joining the radio program as well. Uh, and he is uh, another long, long, long time friend of helping oh, seniors. Oh, not so many longs, Carrie. Come on. Sorry, Dr. Sheldon, but I do have to confess <laughs> this. You were the guy that got Joe started in TV, just like John Harper is the guy that started to uh, started Joe on radio. And how many years ago was that? No, oh, gee, that had.
had to be. We had our radio, our TV program from 91 to 99. So it's probably around 94, 95. Wow. See, so, so, so think about that. And in the second half of the show, we're actually going to be speaking with uh, Dr. Lee Sheldon. I thought this was a fascinating topic, by the way, because I didn't really even think about it. But it's called the dental, uh, sorry, the diabetes dental relationship. And um, I wouldn't have put those two together, Dr. Sheldon. And, and I'm really excited to have us talk about that in the second half of the show. Well, it's good. As a matter of fact, we had somebody come in yesterday. <clears throat> who is um, who, who is a diabetic and heard me, <laughs> heard you and me last month and the month before <laughs> and decided to come in. And this is before we're talking about diabetes, so uh, that's very nice. Well, I, no, that's good. Yeah. So listen, we have just a moment or two before we get to mid-show break, but I, the topic that I was talking with our friend uh, Greg Schwendeman, who's elder law attorney with the law office of Amy B. Van Fossen, we're talking about, we've talked about several things. We talked about fraud. We've also talked a little bit about guardianship, basically just to touch the topic. But another thing we'd put down to talk and want to try to at least say something about before the break is COVID. You know, because we, we've we had, and this is a discussion the three of us can have, because we have all watched this as we all have. Uh, Greg made the point we're like two we're like two years into it and so I'm curious uh, Greg from a legal standpoint mm-hmm. what questions do you get from clients walking in off the street and they ask they you know I'm uh, we've, we've talked to Dr. Sheldon he'll talk about what happens from the dental office but you guys get questions too yeah we, we do um, quite frankly Quite frankly, though, most of the the questions aren't from the client on a legal basis. It's more how do we enact what we're doing legally? Uh In other words, uh, will they be able to come in and sign the documents? Can we go to them for a signing? There's a lot of questions about how do we enact what we've done legally, more so than the legal aspect for COVID. But, um, you know, we, of course, follow CDC guidelines. If the state comes up with some new guideline, because these things change over time, uh, we'll follow them. But, uh, you know, we try to accommodate our clients as best we can because some of them are a little more uh, susceptible to to infection than others. They may have a comorbidity in one client that another client doesn't. So we work with them. Yeah. And I know, Dr. Sheldon, we have literally just like half a minute before break, but I know you had to change a lot of practices around to keep everybody safe in your office as well. We did. I mean, some of the things that we dealt with was was putting in equipment, I think, from our standpoint with Greg, it would be, how do I get in the hospital to visit my loved one? Right. Yes. Yes. We get that too. Yeah. 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 And, and, and it is amazing how much of an impact. And, and, you know, we talked about this, and I just want to say this one more time before we get to the mid-show break. The best graphic that I've seen out there is, 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 a, is really a pro-vaccine graphic, and it's put out by the Brevard County government, and it's the number of hospital, hospitalizations that we're experiencing here at home in Brevard County. You cut through everything, uh, anything else that we want to talk about and try to keep the politics out of it, but this was the graphic from September 13th, so it's just a day or two back. And the number of hospitalizations in Brevard County among not fully vaccinated is down a lot, 236. But the number of uh, people who are fully vaccinated who are in the hospital is, guess what, 14. Yep. So it is. It, it has to be something that says, you know, when everybody talks and you get aside from all the politics, apparently the vaccine is making some way uh, for this to be not quite as severe. And, and I would hope, uh, since it's readily available, that you talk to your doctor if you're not vaccinated and just make sure. But let's move forward with that. So when we come back on the other side of the show, uh, we're going to be talking with attorney, elder law attorney Greg Schwendeman from the... Uh, Uh, Law Office of Amy B. Van Fossen, and in particular, Dr. Lee Sheldon, and we're going to get into this whole diabetes dental relationship. See you in a minute. It's 1233 in the afternoon here on 90.3 FM. You're listening to Helping Seniors of Brevard. As we get back to the show, here's your host, the Executive Director of Helping Seniors of Brevard, Carrie Fink. Thank you, John Harper. Yes, and we're having so much fun. It's our Wednesday gathering on the radio. Every Wednesday at 12 noon, join us for Helping Seniors Radio right here on 30,000 watt FM 90.3 FM, WEJF, it just blasts right up and down the Space Coast and gets into Indian River County, and uh, it's just a great signal. We're grateful for the opportunity to be on this fine radio station, and I also want to welcome uh, the listeners who join us each week online at WEJF.net, and as you know, what we always do is we, uh, we record the show so that we can then come back 
and release it as a on-demand kind of a podcast. So what, what we find out a lot of times is somebody will hear something on the show, uh, it will have meaning for them, and then you always go this, oh, I wish – you know, so-and-so was listening. They really need to hear this. And so the answer is they can. All you have to do is go to the Helping Seniors website, helpingseniorsofbrevard.org. Everything we do, the TV, the radio, the newsletters, every Joe's articles that you see in Hometown News, Althea Today, Ebony News Today, all those, they all go up on the Helping Seniors website. And if it's visual media or radio, um, we also put those up uh, every week on uh, both our YouTube page at Helping Seniors of Brevard. And also our Facebook page at Helping Seniors of Brevard. So lots of good ways to get into it. So on behalf of Joe Steckler, our president and founder, we're having a great dialogue today. Uh, we have our guests in the in the studio. We have both um, actually uh, Greg Schwendeman, uh, who is an elder law attorney with the law office of Amy B. Van Fossen. How are you today, Greg? Pretty good. How are you doing? It is all good. And then also we have none other than the world famous, I like to say, Dr. Lee Sheldon, who uh, has solid bite dental and is the father of one of the top 40 dentists under 40 in America. How about that? Uh, yeah, that's my distinction. Yeah. And also you have another great uh, uh, partner in the practice, Dr. Michelle Furtado, who's uh, board certified. Let me see if I get this right. He's all, he does what you do. He's a periodontist, right? That's correct, but he actually does work. I just hang around and, <laughs> and, and try to look important. Well, I, it, it, well, you know, you actually are at the point in your career where you teach other practices how to do what they do. Uh, I remember a couple of uh, uh, shows back, we were talking about a thing that you were kind of leading the way on about uh, uh, fractured calculus, and, there, and it was fascinating because you're actually now at the level where you're helping other practices understand these things and i thought this is a groundbreaking topic we're going to get to today called diabetes dental relationship i would have never uh i would think diabetes is something that is strictly you know you're speaking to your medical doctor uh but i know and i'm, I'm reading your notes i there's words in here i can't even say dr sheldon <laughs> neutrophil chemotaxis i don't you know you did it man wow you know, you know, immunity is a big deal now. People are talking about immunity. They're talking about T cells and B cells and all the things that are supposed to happen with natural immunity or, or vaccines or, or whatever it is. Hey, you know, it's the ability of the body to fight infection. And so the diabetes dental relationship has been a big one. It's been a strong one. We know the people who have periodontal disease are more likely to have di not more likely to have diabetes, but the diabetes is likely to be worse if you have diabetes uh, if you have periodontal disease. So we've got that relationship. We've got if you're a diabetic and it's not well under control, then you're a dental as well as a medical surgical risk. Mm. So there, there, yeah, this is this is a very tightly intertwined relationship. Well, as, and as we talk about all these things, you know, and people talk about COVID and things like that, and I get now more than ever how important uh, us uh, being in good health is to help help stave off challenges just in a general way. But, you know, uh, I guess a question that it brings up is then, uh, you know, I know there's medical ramifications with uh, diabetes. Like, you know, a question would be, well, infections are a bigger problem for di diabetics, you know, I guess. They are, and you know, one of the bigger bigger problems. And let's go back. To, we introduced the term. Yeah, you pronounced it so well. <laughs> and I have now no we idea put, what it put means. Together, but... put, we put Greg asleep. We put the <laughs> asleep. Neutrophil chemotax is what are you talking about? Okay, so neutrophils is one of the white blood cells. It's one of the white blood cells is responsible for immunity. And essentially, what the white blood cell, what the neutrophil does, is to dis detect in this case, a uh, bacterial infection. So it, it, it detects the bacteria. And when it detects the bacteria, since the bacteria sends out a signal, it goes through the fluid, through the serum in the, in the, in the bloodstream. The neutrophil senses it, and it moves towards that bacteria, and it engulfs it and kills it. Oh. What a great thing. What a great immune system. So we have all these attacks going on, and the neutrophil just says, ah! I'm going to attack the attacker, and I'm going to neutralize it, and it does. Yeah. So what is, and that's what neutrophil chemotaxis <laughs> is. The neutrophil senses the bacteria, the chemical coming out of the bacteria, and the neutrophil comes and it engulfs it. But what happens to diabetes? Uh huh. 
What happens in diabetes? Your blood sugar is up. The neutrophil is stunned. It doesn't get the sense of the bacteria. It can't smell it. And so the bacteria just stays there, and it multiplies and multiplies and multiplies because the neutrophil doesn't know what kind of work it needs to do in order to be able to protect, protect the body. That's why patients are so much more prone to infection. And I'm just not talking about just dental infection. They're more prone to COVID. They're more prone to, 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 to every infection in the body if the diabetes isn't under control because the body doesn't know how to... Uh, how to protect itself in the presence of all that sugar in the blood. So, so I guess that brings up a question. You know, I know when uh, Tammy and I go into the office, you know, every once in a while, your front desk will hand us uh, a, a paper and, and we, we're supposed to update all of our uh, different information. And sometimes as a patient, you know, we're kind of like, why do they need to know that? You know, this is a dentist office, <laughs> You're really right? You're a dentist. What the heck do you need to know that stuff for? <laughs> so, so, but, but I guess the question is, if somebody checks the box and says, well, I am a diabetic patient, does that mean you're, you're, you're approaching things in a different way? You know, I'm approaching things in a different way only if the diabetes isn't under control. Ah, if the diabetes is well under control, then I can pretty much do what I need to do in order to be able to help the patient. Mm -hmm. If the diabetes isn't under control, then there are limitations as to what I can do to help a patient. Mm -hmm. And so uh, when we see a patient who is an uncontrolled diabetic, essentially that patient is limited to emergency procedures only. Why? Because most dental emergency procedures, well, you've got two, you've got toothaches and you've got infections. Mm -hmm. And any time you take out a tooth, you're putting bacteria into the system wow. as well as taking bacteria out. Wow. Well, I don't want to do anything to jeopardize the patient um, if I don't have to. And so I want that diabetes under control so the neutrophil can do its job and the patient is at less risk when we're doing the, the procedure. So uh. the, it, it, the, the, there, there are a number of different ways of doing blood sugars in the past. Uh, the common way of doing it right now is called the hemoglobin A1C. Mm -hmm. And those of you who are diabetics who are listening right now, you know exactly what I'm talking about because your doctor is running an A1C every three months, every six months to see where you are. The hemoglobin A1C is an average of the uh, blood sugar that you have over the previous 60 or 90 days. Mm -hmm. So we're not just taking, taking your blood sugar now. We can see how you've done over the past 60 or 90 days. In other words, you can't cheat on this test. So, <laughs> so we find out how you're doing in order to be able to better predict or to better determine what we need to do, and I'm talking about from a medical standpoint, what we need to do uh, to help you either do better in your diet or take medications and take your body, your diet is always better than, than taking medications. But what we need to do to get that hemoglobin A1C down, the emergency number um, beyond which we won't treat unless it's an emergency is 8.3. Huh. But I'd rather you get it down in the sixes, and most people can. So I guess that's a question is, you know, maybe this is causing somebody to think, well, maybe I need to ask my doctor about that or, or whatever. I didn't realize all this, all this connection, but so what specialty of medicine? I mean, I mean, do you just ask your regular doctor or, or when do you go to a specialist or how does it all that work? Yeah. Also, first of all, your regular doctor can do an awful lot. And certainly um, it's, I think it's important uh, that you start to receive nutritional counseling. And, you know, the typical thing is, well, I know what to eat. Now, well, maybe you do, maybe you don't. Mm -hmm. But just as in any counseling, there's a certain amount of self-discovery that occurs as to what you really can do and what you can't do, or what you're willing to do and what you're not willing to do. Mm -hmm. And somebody who's a good nutritional counselor can help you work within the things that you like so you don't feel like you're suffering right. um, while you're trying to get your diabetes under control. And a good, good nutritionist uh, will, will help you with that. So that's number one. Number two, um, if the diet isn't enough, then there are all medications that can be used. And then if that's not enough, then you use insulin. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. the biggest difficulty we have with patients who say, well, I'm going to do whatever I want to do, uh, just control with medications, is those patients are less likely to be healthy. Those, more, those people are the people who are more likely to um, be sick and die of COVID. So um, part of this is getting the counseling down and to work with the counselor to get to the point where you need less or perhaps no medication. 
Um, if we don't, if if in working with the position, we're still not doing well. It's still in the eighth. I just had a patient a couple weeks ago um, where the patient had a, a hemoglobin A1C of like, I think it was 14. I mean, way off the charts. And now the patient's down to nine, and the doctor, at least the patient, had the impression that the doctor uh, said, well, that's okay, you're doing better. <laughs> um, and it, 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 it had been like that for six months or a year or something like that. You're not doing well enough. No. Yeah. It's time to go to uh, t- time time to go to specialists, and the, the the specialist that you see for this is the endocrinologist. It's another big word, Doctor Sheldon. <laughs> <laughs> well, the the pancreas sends out hormones. <laughs> We're going to a pancreas doctor. Call it. <laughs> it's called an endocrinologist. Okay. Well, you, you know, as we're having this discussion, I was I was, I wanted to ask uh, our elder law friend uh, 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 Greg Schwendeman in on this because you know I was thinking even as we're talking about this whole topic of of uh, diabetes and things, you know, every the headline is always COVID, 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 right. you know, and and I wonder how often we're putting off the what I would call the things that we need to be checking about that are non-COVID. I guess uh, from your perspective, Greg, you, do you see a lot of that happening out there? We're, we're seeing if there's a silver lining in COVID, it's uh-huh. making people aware that they need to be proactive. Uh-huh. Okay? Uh-huh. Uh, so we are seeing an increase in people, including younger people, which prior to COVID, we didn't see people in their 30s and 40s wanting to make a trust or a, a will or a power of attorney and so forth. Um, but now we're seeing an increase in that uh, proactive planning. So that so, is a silver lining. So there is actually a silver lining in this. And Dr. Sheldon, how about you? I mean, do do I remember uh, talking to you shortly after uh, the lockdowns and you and I, just like I did one with uh, a Helping Seniors Update with Greg where we were talking about how they were trying to uh, keep things moving because it's a necessary business even in the middle of a pandemic uh, to do the legal. But People had dental emergencies, and I remember you explaining to me at the same time when we did a helping seniors update early on that you were you were still you guys were still sort of in the office, but you you were extremely limited in what you were able to do. Yeah, at that time we could be an emergency clinic only, and it was interesting that uh, one of the dental emergency clinics was closed during COVID, <laughs> and so we became a dental emergency clinic. I wow. mean, if you can do the fancy stuff, you can do the emergencies, can you? So, um, yeah, and that, that's what we did. We had a limited staff. And, of course, during that time, just as Greg's talking about uh, a heightened awareness, we had a heightened awareness of what was going on. First of all, you know, we're a lot more confident now than we were before. At that time, we didn't know anything about what was going on. Right. And so the fear factor was a, a lot higher than it is right sure. now. Um, but some of the things that we did to retool um, you know, the last the last dental crisis we had was during when AIDS was first discovered. That was 1986, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and so we changed things like we wore gloves for every procedure right. and masks for every procedure. That was new for most dentists at that time. Ah. Now, I mean, that's 1986. Right. So now it's uh, 2020, and and now I know I know it's 2021 now. But <laughs> when, when when this is occurring, it's 2020. It's a, all right, what else can we to do? What can we do? And, of course, we're talking about aerosols, aerosols, aerosols. And we produce aerosols. You know, we're drilling them out. The water is, is, is mm-hmm. spraying. That's an aerosol. We use the ultrasonic scaler. That's an aerosol. Right. What can we do to mitigate that? Because the aerosols being sp- um, sprayed into the patient's mouth then get out of the patient's mouth, and then they can, <clears throat> they can travel. And other people can can um and can uh, can 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 breathe those in so um we were we were pretty lucky to have found a provider who could provide us with a face cone a cone that would go over the face mm-hmm. attached to a HEPA vacuum cleaner so that when we were producing aerosols the aerosols were going into the va- into that hood which went into the HEPA vacuum cleaner rather than going into the air and then we added um, some protection within the air conditioning system itself whether mm-hmm. it was ultraviolet light or whether we were placing electronic uh, charges on whatever would go through the uh, system in order to be able to clump that bacteria and let it go to the floor where it would be easily 
um, um, uh, sucked in by the um, by the uh, by, by the filtration system. We were really conscious. I mean, and so essentially we retooled, which I think is going to be much safer for for everyone in in the dental environment um, because it's a cleaner environment than it was before. What's good is that there have been no links to any super spreading event in any dental office in the country. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So whether they were doing everything we were doing or, you know, in dental offices, they, they take quite a bit, quite, quite a bit of uh, precaution. Um, people are, they're safe going to the dental office. You know, I, I, I remember, I was thinking like, because I remember having that conversation with, with Greg too. It's like every business, you kind of had to like make up these, like, you had to like refigure everything, and like yeah, even like do. like you guys were saying, I don't know that all of it was for the bad. I I thought to me because we just we were just flying, and I was thinking like I remember how they retooled the airplanes, and 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 you know so we're probably getting the cleanest air <laughs> that we ever did, you know, and so so you think maybe not all of this is awful. And so I think uh, I think it's interesting to have that conversation. And here we are, sort of on the backside, where uh, hopefully people are taking it seriously and 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 d- doing the precautions and not getting uh, complacent. But I did want to ask you, Doctor Sheldon, you know, uh, because for those, it's hard to imagine that somebody may not know who you are, Doctor Lee Sheldon of Solid Bite Dental, but. The thing is, there are so many people moving to Florida. It's it's incredible. I mean, the, the the number of families who move to Florida every week, or people who are new, particularly to the Space Coast area, how do they get in touch with your office? Where are you located, and all those things? Let's let's pretend it's somebody. This could be their first time coming into a Helping Seniors Radio Show, and despite the fact that you kind of started out uh, dental implants and all that here on the Space Coast decades back, how do tell us? Yeah. Um, well. Well. Thank you. Um, we've got uh, a full service practice. Essentially, we have my son, the general dentist, and he said, Dr. Michelle Furtado, a board certified periodontist. I do the examinations. I mean, I'm, I'm I'm here to give advice. I stopped doing dentistry years ago, um, and it's fun and it works and 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 things are nice here, so that people can come in here, get a complete dental evaluation. Most everybody says it's the most complete dental evaluation they've ever had, where they get the CT scan and they get um, all the x-rays, and they're spending two hours with us during that examination, so I can give all the options, the expensive options, the not-so-expensive options, so that you know what I think is going to be predictable, and you can make a decision right. uh, for yourself. And we do that um, for our Helping Seniors list, uh, listeners by, uh, you just bring in a check, <laughs> And uh-huh. write a check uh-huh. for $50 to help seniors of Brevard County, and you get all of that for free. So just write a check for $50, and uh, you'll see us for that, um, and uh, be able to make a good decision. We're at 2223 Sarno Road, and that's in Melbourne, and our phone number is 321-259-8000. Well, I'll, I'll be sending my dad to you. So good, yeah. And I was going to say, and Sarno Road. Let me use that as a moment to grab that and say, you know, the American Muscle Car Museum, Doctor Lee Sheldon, is right up the road from you. Mm-hmm. And you can and something's get something's happening there next month. That's happening October 9th, and you can get your Helping Seniors Car Raffle tickets, and you too can join us in the museum for a great night at the museum, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. October 9th. You got to get your tickets. One ticket for twenty five dollars. Five tickets for a hundred dollar donation, and you will have a great night at the museum. Each ticket is admit one, so when you buy five, you can bring your family, you can bring your friends, however all that works, and you will have a great time there. And you might pick up a key to a brand new car. Doctor Sheldon, did I ask you before which car you pick when you win? Oh yes, I forgot what it was, but I know it was a sports car. Oh, okay. Well, that would work. I'll let, I'll let you off the hook with that. But listener. You can get your tickets there at Dr. Lee Sheldon's office, too, right there on Sonar Road. So uh, I would suggest giving a call. And I wanted to ask Greg, too. I wanted to give you the same moment because sure. because I really believe people are moving into this county like crazy. And yes. they don't know. They're hitting st- – or particularly, as we know, with elder stuff – they're hitting it for the first time. It's never been been on the radar screen. But the law office of Amy Van Fossen, what do you guys do in a nutshell, and how do people get in touch with you? In a nutshell, we do elder law. Uh-huh. We do not do criminal or real estate or commercial or any 
other kind of law. We focus on serving the needs of the elderly. Mm-hmm. So we do wills, trusts, estates, mm-hmm. estate planning, VA, Medicaid, of course, guardianship and probate and uh, probate litigation, trust administration. Um, that's what we do. We are at 1696 West Hibiscus Boulevard, Suite A, Melbourne, and that's just behind the mall. Mm-hmm. Our number is 321 345 Five nine four five. You know, and I wanted to comment, both of you guys. I, I this is me. This is Carrie. This is. I'm just saying. I perceive you guys as real leaders in the field. Both when I think about Dr. Sheldon and how he's pioneered so much in terms of uh, uh, not only here locally on the Space Coast. I mean, we've done shows where, where we've talked about uh, him really in the early days of, of implants and things like that, to the point where it's evolved that, he, that we've done shows together where he's actually counseled people, don't be so hasty to get the implant. Let's see what's going on in the mouth and get an understanding of it first. And I've seen you guys the, the, be at that same level where you show that concern for the person. It's, it's not just a, a business transaction. You want to make sure you're getting the right uh, the right situation that serves that need. And I think that's so important. When Joe Steckler started this organization helping seniors of Brevard, um, well, basically now it's getting close to 11 years ago. I know when I first met him, he said, Kerry, he said, I, I did all the Brevard Alzheimer's thing. He said, that's critical. That's important. I started the Joe's Club, but I learned that seniors have problems that go well beyond memory. And I want to start an organization that helps us get information in the hands of people so that we can help them age regardless of, you know, everybody's got a slightly different circumstance, but we can get the most out of the life that we have today and plan the best way we can. And you guys, bo- both you, uh, Greg and uh, Amy and everybody in your law office, and also Dr. Sheldon, you with Dr. Furtado and your son, Dr. Matt Sheldon, you guys really kind of exemplify what I would call the spirit of helping seniors. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you as well. And, of course, that was one thing that Joe wanted to make sure, that if we're going to be associated with helping seniors, those people are helping helping seniors. They're not just people who pay to be part of helping seniors. Right. You've got to have uh, a level of expertise and, frankly, a level of integrity in order to be able to, uh, not a level of integrity, full integrity in order to be able to qualify to be a member of the organization. That's why I'm proud to be a member. Yeah, and and that's that's it, and that's why we soldier on in the helping seniors world, uh, because because uh, as we were talking about, one of the reasons I wanted to stop down and ask you guys to talk about each of your uh, practices, because we can't make the assumption that people know who to call or where to turn to. Not only because people are moving into our county at such a fast rate, but also people are just hitting certain situations. We call it kind of like a bullseye. You know, you're not thinking about, maybe you should be, but maybe you're not thinking about your teeth until now a dental emergency pops up, or maybe you're not thinking about the situation like we started out the show, Greg Schwendeman talking about um, the guardianship and some of those things. You may not think about that ahead of time, but boy, if you can get ahead of that whole aging curve and those problems, it's going to be so much the better for you. So I want to thank you, Greg Schwendeman, with the Law Office of Amy B. Van Fossen, and thank you, Dr. Lee Sheldon, with Solid by Dental, for joining us today. And I want to thank you uh, for joining us on the radio and be back here next Wednesday, 12 o'clock noon, right here on WEJF. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next week.